George, for the last time, you can't play Black Wing and Nationals! Jimmy, I need your Doom Dozers. Kramer, why do you need my Doom Dozers? I'm playing B Force, Jerry. B Force. It's the next big thing, Jerry. It's gonna be huge. B Force. I'm telling you, B Force. Hey, everybody. Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. Today, we're taking a look at a recently released swarm of interesting insects, all the way from the synchro dimension of everyone's favorite series of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Let's find out if these buzzing boys really are the bee's knees, or if they're all sting and no substance. Presenting Battle Wasps. So here's the list, and wow, this is hip. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, according to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that B-Force should be playable. Its card pool is too shallow to get its fat little synchros out of the extra deck. B-Force, of course, tops anyway, because B-Force doesn't care what Pojo thinks is impossible. These bumbling bunguses are a series of synchro materials designed to special summon a suite of... I guess, bees in suits of armor or something? I'm a little shaky on what exactly the design goal is here, but the upsides of this strategy are an on-theme soul charge and the opportunity to make as many bee puns as humanly possible. Unfortunately, since we only have the first wave of support, the downsides are numerous as well. There's really only four good monsters, they're intensely normal summon reliant, and the bee bosses aren't likely to generate much buzz. However, while the core of this deck may not yet yield honey, it's in a perfect position to house some of the most neglected monsters in recent memory. Insects. In the dark crevices of each condemned pack for the last several years, Konami has printed one or two extremely powerful support cards for insects. Like the comparable support for reptiles, they likely assumed there would never be a gathering of the good stuff, but battle wasps might be the perfect shell for this swarm of support. With access to Ballpark All-Star Gokipole, the exceptionally flexible Parasite Paranoid, a devastating Doom Dozer setup suite, and the combo starting Insector Picophanera, we might be able to add some sting to the distressingly linear battle wasp setup combos. So with that, let's get into the card by card, beginning with our wasps. First, we're on 3 Aeroblast the Rapid Fire, which when normal summoned, special summons a level 3 or lower insect from the graveyard and floats if it's destroyed by an opponent's card. After that is 3 Twinbo the Attacker, super inspired name there guys, who is a free special from the hand, can attack twice, and locks you into insect monsters. Third is the queen of the deck, Sting the Poison, who searches a battle wasp when normal or specialed and can negate an effect monster's effects by tributing another insect at instant speed. Finally, three pin the bullseye, which is a free special from the hand and deals a whopping 200 points of damage per pin once per turn. For non-bees, we're on three Goki Pole, one Neos Bug, our target of choice because it equals 8,000 with our setup combo, our usual equip for Pyco, Resonance Insect, and its target of choice, Doom Dozer, three Parasite Paranoid, which prevents targeting or attacking insects by a monster we equip, and three Effect Veiler. We're on Veiler over Ash because of our first spell, Insect Imitation, which turns our useless level one nonsense into copies of Sting, and more generally lets us work through Wasps. We're on 3 of Summoning Swarm, which summons Battle Wasps from Graveyard equal to our opponent's monsters, and Revival Swarm, which special summons a Battle Wasp from the Grave and protects our insects. Finally, we're on 3 Super Cocoon of Evolution, which allows us to tribute an insect monster with an equip, either our Pyco target or an opponent's monster we've slapped Paranoid onto, along with 3 Twin Twister and a Foolish Burial. In the extra, we've got one each of each of the Battle Wasp Synchros, Ballista the Armageddon, who banishes bugs to decrease attack and defense, then returns them when he destroyed, Hama the Conquering Bow, and Halberd the Charge, who attack really well, and Azusa the Ghost Bow, who is a tuner herself. After that is Boral Sword, two Pyco so they can shuffle each other back, Great Fly, Nightmare's Unicorn, Phoenix and Cerberus, Clara and Rushka for corner cases, number 70 Malevolent Sin, since our setups routinely afford us the material for a rank 4, but lock us into insect monsters, a Corbage to lay over him, and a Baguska as a generic. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Ultra Athlete, a deck that, at this point in its lifespan, is effectively just a shell for Pankratops control. We're going first, and what's the deal with decks that blind second? Our ability to board build is suboptimal, to say the least, but we'll do the best we can with the tools we've been afforded. 
Thankfully, the tools we have this game are particularly strong. We'll lead with a copy of Sting the Poison to get a copy of Pin the Bullseye. We'll special summon both that and Twinbow the Attacker before Link summoning Insector Pico. We'll activate that effect to get a Resonance Insect on our side of the board and activate its Grave Effect for a Doom Dozer. After we special that, we'll activate its second effect to send a copy of Gogi Pole, special summon a copy of Neo Bug, activate the second effect of Pico to shuffle three cards back and draw, activate the Grave Effect of Revival Swarm to protect her, and Xyz summon Malevolent Sin. Our opponent's going to start by special summoning a copy of Pancratops and activating FB Goods on Penalty Box for a copy of Signing Deal. They will tribute summon a monster with the exact same amount of attack before attacking into our Pico, dealing 1600 and eating our Xyz. Who could defeat the Malevolent Sin? For turn, we draw a pretty good card. We're going to lead with a copy of Pico. They will chain the effect of Pancratops, but we still get to resolve it. Off the top, we find... Oh, great, a second cocoon. We'll activate Sting's effect, then special summon a copy of Twinbow, and wouldn't you know it... Boy, do those stars line up nicely. We'll attack directly for 3,000 points of damage, then pass it back to our opponent. They will special summon a second copy of Pancratops before activating Reasoning. We pick four, they get five, and Perfect Ace is a pretty good one. They'll destroy our Ballista, but because it's on their turn, they aren't able to activate the effect of Ace to negate its Grave Effect. For turn, we draw a Twin Twister, but this should be enough. We'll lead with the Picophenia. They'll chain Ace. We'll chain Sting the Poison to negate the effect of Ace, and we should be off to the races. We'll get a copy of Goki Pole, activate the effect of Super Cocoon of Evolution for a second and Sting, then activate the effect of Goki Pole. Though it does have 1500 attack, we won't be able to destroy it. We should be able to Synchro Summon our way out of it. We'll Special Summon this Goki Pole back, Special Summon this Pin the Bullseye, don't forget the 200, before going into a Great Fly, shuffling back a copy of Pico, and going into Azusa. I think the stylish way to win this game is with two attacks from Twinbow, so I do just that. Our second match is up against Weathery, a deck that has become exceptionally annoying in recent weeks. Who would have thought one piece of support would make this so playable? They're going first, as God intended. Let's see if we can beat our opponent's oppressive turn one board! Okay, well, we probably can. We'll lead with a copy of Twin Twisters, targeting their Twin Twisters. We'll activate the effect of Goki Pole for a Neo Bug. Normal summon a copy of Air Blessed, bringing back Goki Pole. And special summoning a copy of Pin, don't forget the 200, to Link Summon Picafanera. When we activate the effect, they will Gamma, and oh boy, that sucks. This is a huge choke point for the deck, but at least we can attack into this copy of Gamma and end on a... Baguska. All right, well, at least our opponent is bricking, too. They'll set a copy of Thundery and pass it back. For turn, we draw a Parasite Paranoid. Sheesh, we'll activate Revival Swarm on Era Blessed and go to Battle Phase. We'll attack into the Thundery and directly for 2100. Things aren't looking fantastic, especially when our opponent draws Hecatrice. They'll activate Hecatrice's effect to get a copy of Valhalla Howl of the Fallon. They'll special summon a copy of Thunder Weathery Pattern, then banish it for the Snowy, then normal summon a Snow, use Snow's effect to set a copy of Thundery, set a Kaiju over our Era Blessed, and return everything relevant to our hand. Things are looking particularly particularly bad. They're bringing everything back right now. We have both an equip spell and the card that benefits off of it, but because both of them can tag out at instant speed, it's not particularly good. Our opponent finally sets a Cloudy on a bad position. They'll reset this copy of Snowy alongside a Rainbow before popping off a little bit. They'll return this Kaiju to the hand and get in for a fair amount of damage. Hopefully we drop something relevant. <sighs> in main phase two, they'll set Rainy. Not like we play a lot of things we're going to set anyway. Insect Imitation is interesting. Well, they bring back everything, and we're going to go ahead and activate Parasite Paranoid on the one they can't tag out to get a copy of Sting. We'll use Sting's effect for a copy of Era Blessed, then use Era Blessed's effect on a Goki Pole. After that, we're going to use Super Cocoon to put that Neobug back. We'll activate Pico's effect and activate Goki Pole's effect. Goki Pole's going to special summon a Neobug, and oh my god, I forgot how much attack everything has. At the very least, we get to special summon everything back with his Summoning Swarm, which is fantastic. We'll do 200 with Pin, don't forget it, before going into Azusa and Doom Dozer. We'll activate the second effect of Resonance Insect to send one of the worst cards in our deck to the graveyard, and then we'll shuffle three back and draw. We can do a fair amount of damage here, but not a ton. We get in for 800 and 400 as well, before special summoning back Azusa, attacking into Sleet, forcing them to return it to the hand, and they tag out as well for this copy of Sun. We'll attack into the copy of Sleet once again, but they're able to search off of it, taking 2800 damage, which is notably not lethal. They're at 500, but I don't know how we're going to push through that last little bit of damage. They bring back Sleet and go into Thunder. They'll return this Kaiju to their hand, alongside eating the Picofinia. They'll special summon a copy of Rainy and use it to banish said Kaiju. Oh, things are looking exceptionally bad. We have the Doom Dozer at the very least, and they set one card. For turn, we draw a Neobug, probably the worst draw remaining in our deck. They'll bring back, oh my god, three Weatheries. We'll normal summon a copy of Era Blessed for a copy of Pin the Bullseye. We'll ping for 200, don't forget it, before activating Insect Imitation for a Sting the Poison. That's going to add a Twinbow to hand, so now we have enough attackers to push for lethal. We should be able to do it this turn. 
except they have a super polymerization to eat our double attacker. So they are able to stave off the relentless onslaught for one more turn, which is really all they need because they'll be able to get every single weathery card back in their standby phase. They do just that, and then in main phase one, tribute summon this copy of the Kaiju and normal summon this copy of Snowy. They'll go to battle phase. We at the very least can tribute the Kaiju to negate the effect of Snowy, but we're still taking a hot amount of damage. I really don't see any way out, and then when they get standby phase, the ability to negate one of our cards, it's gonna look even worse. We'll use Air Bless effect, and they negate the activation. Wait, Air Bless does float, which means we'll be able to special summon a pin the bullseye from our deck and revival storm the second one and burn for 400! Well, that was so hype that I don't even care about the stomping I'm about to receive. Our third match is up against Newman. And it's a best of three versus meta versus Salaman Great. Let's see just how good we are at breaking boards. They're going to lead with a copy of Salaman Great Circle, getting a Gazelle to hand. They'll normal summon Gazelle to send a copy of Spinny, then special summon a copy of Valynx. That adds a Sanctuary to hand before they special summon Spinny, special summon Crusadia, and go into Mirage Stallio. That's going to turn into a Jack Jaguar and a Sunlight Wolf, which will be reincarnation summoned immediately afterwards. They're going to activate Jack Jaguar's effect in order to get a copy of oh, the Gazelle back to hand alongside a second Valynx and the Circle. This is about as bad as it gets. We're going to lead with a copy of Parasite Paranoid, special summon a copy of Twinbow, and normal summon a copy of Goki Pole before going into Pico and triggering the Grave Effect of Goki pole to get a copy of Valynx out of the graveyard. We'll crash and then attack into the remaining copy of Valynx before activating the effect of Pyco, which triggers an effect Valor from our opponent. Well, we can activate Revival Swarm until we see the DD Crow. Okay, I guess maybe we can use the Grave Effect so that our Pyco survives until next turn. They're going to activate Salaman Great Circle at end step, and the writing's kind of on the wall for this one. They'll lead with a copy of Foxy and Special Summon a copy of Fowl. That Foxy's going to find... God, roar. Okay, afterwards they're going to use Mirage Stallio for Falco. They'll go into a Valynx, triggering the effect of Gazelle in hand. They'll use that to send a Rage, go into Sunlight Wolf, use Mirage Stallio to return this copy of Pyco, <sighs> conveniently getting around our restriction and basically putting enough monsters on board to OTK us. They'll go into an Update Jammer and a copy of Borolo Dragon. I decide it's time to concede. All right, for game two, it's time to be reasonable. There is no way we're ever going to beat an established Salaman Great board, so I have elected to go first. Fear my malevolent sin. We're going to lead with a copy of Sting the Poison. This is a good draw at the very least. We'll activate its effect and... Oh, okay, so... Um, that's the end of our turn. Our opponent's going to lead with a Foxy, and like our opponent, we have the Effect Veiler, but unlike us, our opponent is playing a competent deck. This means they'll be able to go into Veiling, send a copy of Gazelle. They will then activate Gazelle's effect for a Rage. God, they're not screwing around. They'll Reincarnation Summon a Sunlight Wolf attack over our copy of Sting, then activate the effect of Sunlight Wolf, set Rage, and a copy of Cosmic Cyclone. Now, our hand actually works pretty well against this. We'll lead with the Twin Twisters on these two set cards before activating the effect of Error Blessed for a Sting. We'll use Sting's effect to get a copy of Pin the Bullseye to our hand, then Special Summon a copy of Pico. Though they are able to Ghost Ogre it, we can still equip a Goki Pole from deck. We'll go into Battle Phase, and this is that corner case I was telling you about in Main Phase 2. We'll go into Clara and Rushka and eat this copy of Sunlight Wolf. Things are looking up. Our opponent passes, so maybe we'll get there with Neos Bug Beats. Unfortunately, we draw probably the worst card in our deck, but 1800 is 1800. They draw a particularly bad card as well. Maybe we can do this. We have an Insect Imitation. We'll go to Battle Phase, get in for 1800 once again, and really just one more turn of this ought to do it. They're going to set a card, and God, I hope it doesn't have 1800 defense. Boy, that would really suck. We'll lead with a Twin Twister and go to Battle Phase. Okay, so now we're at a stalemate. Uh, I don't want to go into anything relevant to eat that. And unfortunately, they've drawn a second Flame Buffalo, which means they can just pop off. They'll go into a Spinny, a Mirage Stallio, a Gazelle, trigger the effect of Gazelle to get a copy of Jaguar and Graveyard, a Sunlight Wolf, bouncing this copy of Neo Spug, special summoning a copy of Jack Jaguar, adding the Gazelle back, and eating the remainder of my board and the remainder of my hopes. For turn we draw, God, it's gotta be something unreal. It's gotta be something absolutely ludicrous to beat Rage. And while it is pretty good, I don't think it's going to do it. They'll DD Crow our copy of Sting, and that's just about as pathetic as it gets. So we're back with the deck, and while I wanted to believe we'd beat meta, let's not delude ourselves. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the deck is much more coherent than I anticipated. I suspected we'd have to suffer through multiple packs of one to two card support before anything cohesive emerged, but the deck's already got a pretty clear linear game plan and reasonable payoff. Two, the additional inclusions, Goki Pole, the Resonance Package, and the Spells, are right at home. I was worried they'd conflict, but they work together as a unified swarm. 
And three, the games felt like an old kind of Yu-Gi-Oh. Combo-oriented, but with payoffs of large monsters and battle protection, not negation. And the cons. One, it's not up to par with meta. Its turn one setups are not nearly as explosive, interactive, or repeatable than anything remotely playable. Two, currently it is a very normal summon reliant. This could change as additional bees make their way out of the hive, but for now, this is the best we've got. And three, as Seinfeld found out, it turns out jokes about bees wear themselves out almost immediately. All in all, it's a fun deck that is very characteristic of Arc-V, mid-tier power with a multitude of unrelated effects that result in underpowered setups. So that's that. Everyone please wish Costanza luck with Black Wings at Nationals! While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special thanks to my patrons, especially Colin Whalen, Michael Samuor, Ace Enigma, Adrian Bra, and Distran. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash mbtygo every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, I'll see you next time!